we'll go ahead and get a fresh set of files for chapter 10. That's going to look at some of the generic built-in reporting options, um, as well as the custom reports and the creation of the drainage tabulation sheet. Uh, so that'll cover some, some of the plans preparation uh, in that chapter, actually. Power Geopack is going to remember the DRPRRD01 file. We're using the user of FDOTSS4. We get that from clicking on the icon. And we also get the interface FDOTSS4 by using that SS4 icon. So we'll reopen the DRPRRD01. The FDOT plans development task. And we're going to click the first icon under drainage plans. That'll open up Geopack drainage. Does not open up the project though. So we're going to pick project our SR61 GDF, and we'll get this criteria warning. <clears throat> and then once again, we'll load the correct project preferences, and then we'll be ready to start. So we'll do a file open, load our preferences from the desktop, click OK. I'll get a couple of warnings about the shape file. I'll click no, click OK, and then the last click will be yes to save those drainage preferences. <clears throat> All right, so that'll take us here um, into chapter 10. We do have, as shown on page 10.1, the drainage reports toolbox. And there's although there's not an exercise for that, we looked at it a little bit earlier, and that's under toolboxes and then reports. And it's also available under reports, drainage areas, inlets, storm drains, and links. So it's also here from the menu pull down. Um, the reports in order here are the drainage area report, the drainage node report sump, drainage node report on grade, drainage link report, the configuration of the links. Then there's the drainage link report, the computations. And then we have the report builder that we will look at, and we also have a tool for generating the report. So um, we'll go ahead and close that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we'll flip over to 10-4 in order to start the uh, official exercise we have in the book here. So on page 10-4, as we have in every single chapter, we have the steps to go through the road project manager which is steps one through five. We know that we don't have to do that. Step six and seven, we don't have to do. We've already opened up our drainage database and we've loaded the preferences, but we will want to do step eight on the bottom of page 10-4, which is making that SR61-1 our active network. And to do that, we're gonna to go to the network menu We'll pick Active Network. 61-1 is the only one we have anyway. It's going to be highlighted automatically. And then we'll click OK. And you'll see across the top of our menu bar, SR61-1 is now active. <clears throat> so that's going to let us go here at the top of page 10.5. Some of these tools that we're about to use, at least the tool we're about to use on 10.5, um, and then in, in a few minutes on 10.8, these are FDOT VBAs, and sometimes we have and run into issues with them. So we're going we're gonna to try and uh, see if these work. So at the top of page 10.5, we're underneath the FDOT plans development. And we're looking under drainage plans, and we want to find this second icon in the third row that says drainage tabulation. So we'll go ahead and click on that. This is going to let you pick here on 10.5. It, it does tell you and give you a little a warning here. You need to be in the drainage plan file, which we're in. The drainage project should be open with all the calculations updated and we should have a valid network active, and, and we have all that. 
We're inside the drainage plan file. Our project is open. Calculations are updated, and we have a you know, valid network active. So to start filling this out, we'll start at the top here with the Geopack drainage database file. You're going to click your little magnifying glass on the right-hand side. And we're going to pick our SR61 GDF file. Bless you. We'll click open. It's going to pick up the rainfall zone and the intensity. And then we're going to be able to fill out by typing the state road number, SR61. We're going to report on the network, SR61-1. We can give it a description here, and I'll just be a little bit lazy. SR61 recon for reconstruction. Uh, we're going to have a FIN number. That's 2204955201. That should be 11 characters. Counties, that's pronounced Wachula. Is that Wachula? Which is W A L W A K U L A. I can't type or spell. And it's prepared by this. This is always good to have. It's prepared by this generic drainage designer. I don't, I don't know who did it. Uh, drainage person to blame uh, we'll call it that dates going to be filled out automatically um, it's checked by drainage expert to blame yeah. <laughs> um, and they checked we checked it on 0 2 22 we it was all made today all built and checked today Organization, FDOT, and it's got this impervious threshold of 0.5, and we should have it all filled out. Now, these, these tools do have some buttons on them at the upper left. They do have preference files that you can save. I have been warned that some of these you don't ever want to click. So I probably would play it safe on all of these tools just fill them out from scratch every time. I have been warned that some of these buttons here on some of these tools don't always work. Um, I don't know or don't remember which ones, so I'm not touching any of them. We'll just fill it out from scratch. So what we're going to do now is, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll go ahead and pick uh, generate storm sewer tabulation. And what this wants to do is it's going to go out and create an Excel spreadsheet that if you flip over to 10.6, we're going to call SR61 storm tabs. Now they're using an underscore, but I, I don't think you have to use an, an underscore there. But we'll, we'll stick with our book fairly closely. Um, if nothing comes up under the report network dropdown, uh, Ricardo, it's probably going to be because you need to set the uh, SR61-1 network actively active. So probably what's happening there is unless this SR61-1 network is active, it's not going to show up underneath the report network. I believe that's probably the issue. Uh, that you're running into out there online. So I think you can set that network active and just stay in this dialog box and then it'll go ahead and, and show up for you. I'm not positive about that. I would try to set the network active and leave the dialog open and then try and set the report network and then whatever you might have typed in there will go ahead and stay. Um, if that doesn't work you might have to close out of the dialog and come back into it in order for it to uh, refresh and, and bring up that uh, active network. 
or that's more than likely the the issue that you're running into out there, uh, Ricardo. So um, back here, I'm going to click Generate Storm Sewer Tabulation. It should default to the Drainage folder, and I'll call that SR61 Storm Tabs. I'm not using um, underscores. I'll just use the spaces. I think it'll be fine. And then we'll go ahead and click Save. This tool should let us know when that spreadsheet is created, if I remember correctly. It's going to say Done Generating Report. And then when you click OK, that report's generated and should be in our drainage folder. If you'll browse out to your drainage folder, it should have created this XLS spreadsheet. And I believe, don't we have a tool that will link to the spreadsheet and plot it on the plan sheet? I think we have a, a what's called a link data manager for that. Yeah, we'll, we'll give that a try. So if you're able to get to this uh, spreadsheet, um, everything did work. Um, if you uh, were not able to get that spreadsheet, we'll keep working with you to try and get it to work. Um, this is going to be all the information about everything in the, the drainage in that particular network. And then we do have some tools that aren't necessarily outlined in, in our book here. Um, they're under, it's been a while since I've used them, but I think if you look under the Actions menu, and let's see what we have in the, the drainage plans here. We might have a, a tool that will do this for us. Uh, this is the one I'm thinking of, and this is worth probably taking a look at if we can get it to run easily. Um, if you look in the third row once again, if you click the third icon there, this will create and place the summary of the drainage structures. Um, this one is also a VBA, so there may be some issues uh, with running it. But what this, what this tool would let you do is you, you would create your summary of drainage structures file. And I'm not going to go through that step, but that's under Actions, Create Files. And what you do is you pick your drainage database. And then you can uh, give it a sheet prefix and starting number. But you click Create Spreadsheet. You click save, it will give you an update down here at the bottom left. And it will have another dialog that will come up and tell you when it's done. So you'll see it's adding the data to the spreadsheet. It will give us a confirmation when this tool is, is completed itself. Once it's created that spreadsheet, it's going to open up the spreadsheet. Uh, you can change the, I think we can change the width of the columns. That did not end up being a problem the last time we used it. Um, you can physically go in here and change the height of the columns, but it is not going to be reflected in the, the sheet itself. So once this is created, we can click Draw Spreadsheet. You pick your spreadsheet. And it'll give you a message It's drawing the spreadsheet. And I believe it also will give us a prompt that tells us when it's done with it as well. Uh, we'll give it a few moments here and let it go ahead and uh, complete. So it's finished. And let's see what it did, if anything, in our drawing. And I really should be in a summary of drainage structure sheet for this. And it does assume that your drawing is unrotated. And sometimes you will get this these huge text here, sheet summary. Um, uh, it's probably the plot scale. Probably need to set the plot scale. I probably really should have been in uh, summary drainage structure sheet.
but this tool this tool is going to let you produce uh, pretty easily the summary of drainage structure sheet that you need for your plants. All right, so it does uh, draw that in as one single item or one single step. So if you did happen to try that, if you hit Control Z, uh, that will go ahead and back it out of your your screen there. Um, but I, I wanted to show you that tool since it was already there. Um, the other tool that I was thinking of related back to this tab sheet that we just or the the tab uh, storm tabs that we just created was this tool here it's under actions and it's called linked data manager it's down toward the bottom here uh, I don't think there's a, a shortcut to that but we'll check it's under quantities, it's under quantities? Yes. okay thanks so there's a shortcut under quantities and it is the it's the chain one open link data manager so that this one here and there there are tutorials online for this um, this will let you create a new link um, and we have a way to create a new spreadsheet from a template we can pick it from quantities um, let's see what else can we just browse yeah we can select an existing file and I can pick that storm tab sheet that I created it's sort of stuck or stuck for right now we'll let it uh, read in but what this tool will, will let you do, and it's, it's linked more to the plan preparation process, is it'll let you link live to that spreadsheet. And then if you need to make changes, you can just make changes not to your sheet in your DGN file, but make changes to the spreadsheet. And that DGN file can update automatically from that spreadsheet. Although it looks like, looks like it does not want to link to this particular file. Not sure if it's too big. Um, we'll see. We'll give it a few more minutes and see what happens. If not, we'll close out of it and we'll move on here to the bottom of 10.7. And we'll take a look at the customized reports. And we'll look at the drainage sketch of our network. All right. Doesn't look like that's going to work. Let's just go ahead and get out of that. And then we'll just move ahead here to the bottom of 10.7. All right, so um, I'm not going to rerun completely that link data manager, uh, but I'm going to take a quick look at it here just briefly. And there is a tool here to create new from template. And let's see if we have anything particular for drainage. So for text notes, we do have drainage map notes. That's not going to relate to the uh, tab sheet that we made there. These are mostly notes, general notes. There's a summary of drainage structure notes template. Let's see what we have. This would usually be under data boxes or sheets. Let's try sheets and see if we have any template that would match uh, drainage here. Um, I'm not sure. It doesn't look like it's going to work with that spreadsheet we created. <clears throat> All right. So moving ahead here on page 10.7. So we did have some, some built-in uh, reporting tools that were pretty extensive. Uh, we started out with the reporting tools from the navigator with the query tools. Um, that wasn't a, a printed or a savable report, but that let us dig into the drainage database and get some information. We took a look at the type of reports that we had back on page uh, 10.1 which was underneath our reports toolbox. And then here on page 10.5 and 10.6, we looked at some customized VBA reports that are available with the drainage tools. If none of those work, then we have what's shown over here on page 10.7. This should let you build just about any type of report that you might want to. And the reason I say that is it has access to all the different types of elements, links, nodes, uh, and inlets. And as we pick those various items, it shows all the available data about those particular items. So I'm going to go ahead and reopen drainage here. 
reopen my SR61 GDF file. And just to be safe, I'll reload those preferences. All right, so to get to this report builder, it's under the reports menu, and it's right here, it's builder. So go ahead and click on reports and then builder. Uh, I will go ahead and set my network active first, and then we'll go to reports and then builder. So on this report builder, we have some instructions, and, and we'll follow those instructions in a moment in order to uh, create our custom report but what you're going to see is we have this component report basis and we can set it to area inlet node link or culvert and then as we set it to these different options we have the component data that's available so for an area we have the inlets that are associated with a particular area for the area we have of course the area and all the various pieces about the area including sub areas if we had that sub area delineation working we have nodes associated with the area and then we can also check this checkbox that says include active network only if we pick the report basis of inlet it gives us all the information about the different inlets or nodes we set it to node all the information about all of the nodes. If we set it to link, we have all the information about the different links or the pipes. So I think with that type of um, detail that we can look at into that database, you should be able to build just about any report uh, that you might need here. That's you know, not built in necessarily in one of those generic reports. So for our exercise, we're going to have our component report basis is going to be set to link. We're going to include our active network only. And then for our component data, we're going to set this component data to from node. And it abbreviates that with FN, so that's from node. And we're going to select the from node ID, the from node description, and the from node type. So we're going to do that. You can either do it by double clicking and it'll pass it over to the right hand side. Or you can single click. So I'll, I'll single click on from node description and I'll pick include. And then I'll go ahead and add the from node node type. It's really going to be your, your first three there. Now you can pick those with the control key and you can push other items over to the right hand side real easily if you need to. So you don't have to pick them individually. The custom reporting tool is pretty friendly in that once you've picked an item and you've you've pushed it over there and to the right to go ahead and include it in your report, it grays it out here on that left hand side. So it makes it makes it real easy to, to realize that you've already picked those particular items. Uh, and you'll see that right here in that screenshot in the middle of 10.7. Now we're going to set our number of decimal places to three. And then we'll type in our file name and extension. So they, they call this one SR61-1 nodes. And then they give it a .csv extension. And then they also have CSV typed in there as the default extension. We're going to include the field names. So that's going to give us a, a header. And I'm going to make sure that my extension is set to CSV here. So we're going to call this SR61-1nodes.csv. CSV is the output file extension, three decimal places. We are including a header that with the field names in it, 
and we're going to have it, of course, comma delimited. And to create the file, you click generate. It'll tell you that that file's been generated, and we really don't have to exit out of the program to view the file. We can just simply click the view button, and it'll open it up in this text editor. Uh, if you wanted to edit it in Excel, of course, you could go ahead and, and open up Excel. So we've got our from node ID. The description, we never had any description on any of the from nodes. So that's why you've got double commas here. And then we have the from, from node type. So really uh, a better format for this report is we really don't need the description. We know they're blank for all of them. Regenerate that and review it again. Now it's just the from node name or ID and the from node type. So you can create all kinds, dozens and dozens of different reports from here as you need to. And then if you'll flip over to page 10.8, we're going to go ahead and try and take advantage of another VBA that we have here that'll give us a sketch of the active drainage network. So I'll close my report builder. And then I'm going to go here to the pink bar menu. I think we also, we also have it here in drainage plans. It happens to be the first icon in the third row. It'll say sketch the Geopack drainage network. You'll see that at the top of page 10.8. Or you can go over to the pink bar menu. And let's see, I think it's in there too. I think it's under design apps. It's under Geopack VBAs. Maybe it's not there anymore. Let's see if we can find it. Let's look under drainage, drainage VBAs. There it is. So it's also under that pink bar menu. It's under drainage VBAs, drainage network sketch. So hopefully that will open for everyone. No more compile errors or stuff yet. <laughs> not yet. Um, that's going to let you pick the drainage network project file. That's our SR61. It'll pick up the active network. And then it has options for the node labels, the link labels, and the node cells. Now, what we found out before, if I'm remembering correctly, is we need to set the background color for MicroStation to white. Because it, it, it's, I think it's drawing the pipes. All the pipes and the connections are are drawn with black lines in here, which isn't working with the, the background. So I'm going to go here to my workspace preferences, and I'm just going to change the, the, just flip the background color, and then rerun that VBA to create the drainage sketch. I think that will give us a, literally a better picture here. So now you can see the pipes. And then you've got options in here to bump up the scale. And the scale is separate on the node cells and the node labels and also separate on the link labels. So the, the cell is or the scale is separate on all of these. So if you have to adjust all three, you're going to have to toggle over to each one and adjust them individually. And then the move option, does it doesn't work with the cells because the cells stay where the inlets and the structures are. But the move option will work with the node labels. So you can kind of scoot them out and away from the nodes. It's an all or nothing type of thing. And it will work with the link labels. We can move them away from the pipes a little bit. You know, it's not MicroStation, but it's still pretty handy to have a sketch of this drainage network. Once that drainage network, once you have it looking about the way you want it to look, you have a save icon here, and it'll save it out to a JPEG file. Just hit save, and it's going to save a JPEG file. In this case, 
should be right out here in my drainage folder in my project. I don't know why it doesn't. Let's see if this will open with paint. Yeah. You probably will have to open it with uh, Windows Paint to get it to work. Uh, you can see now I've got a sketch of this network. It's not like exporting a drawing or saving it as a PDF. It doesn't have a border or scale around it. It's literally just what it's called. It's a sketch. But it's good enough to see what your network consists of. Only trick with that is it defaults to um, a dark color for all the pipes. You got to. It, it depends on your background color of a microstation. So before running that tool, you may have to go like I did and go to Workspace Preferences and just switch out the background color. That's all there is to it. We'll regroup, get the Chapter 11 files, and, and make a few revisions uh, to our design. If I recall correctly, we end up adding a couple of these structures that, that have been sort of literally floating around uh, the whole time for us or, or with us. Um, so we'll go through the steps of adding those structures, and then we'll recalculate our network, and we'll recalculate our uh, storm frequency as well. So we're going to go ahead and start uh, with Chapter 11 here, and we'll go ahead and get a fresh set of files for that. So I'm going to close out of SS4, and we've done this enough times. I think you know what to do. You're going to delete your current project that's in your e-projects and you're going to replace that with the chapter 11 files so question in case you did not hear it online uh, was is there a way to make it save the active network um, it, there is not that I'm aware of we have to reopen the project each time it will not set the network active by default and then we have to set it active manually each time so you'll return back to the DRP RRD You'll go back to your FDOT plans development task, go into drainage plans and reopen our SR61 project. Uh, sometimes if you, if you end up with a crash, you have to run clear crash, you'll get this message, drainage project is locked by another user. If it's just you running the drainage project locally, you can hit yes and just keep continuing with that project. If that drainage project is out on a network, this message might mean that someone else is in that drainage project. And if you hit yes, you're going to delete and mess up their whole entire project. If you're working locally, you hit yes. If you even remotely suspect that someone else could be in that actual project, you hit no and you go figure it out. So I'm going to hit yes here. We're going to get the criteria warning because we don't have a D drive. All of the projects that we've unzipped had a D drive for the criteria preferences. And we'll open our project preferences and we're gonna reload our G, uh, DPF file. Click OK, I'm gonna get a couple of warnings about the shape file. I'm gonna say no, OK, and I'm gonna say yes to save my preferences. So we're, we're back where we have typically been here. So if you look on page 11.1, you're going to see the global editor. That's a really good tool for editing items very quickly if we need to. Uh, we looked at that back in, in chapter number 8. And what we're going to do here in chapter 11 is we're going to review some system modification options. Uh, we're going to end up, if I recall correctly, hooking in this S206 and 204 into our drainage system. On one of our structures, we're going to add a J-bottom structure, and we're going to show you how to adjust those cells so they're going to align correctly. Then we're going to analyze our system for a different storm frequency. I think our default that we had uh, was a three-year storm frequency, and we're going to run it with a 25-year frequency. And we're going to find out at that frequency 
we're not going to meet the hydraulic grade line clearance. So we'll we're going to have to adjust one of our pipes. And that'll be the last thing we do. So we're going to change one of the pipe sizes to make sure that hydraulic grade line is not going out of the top of the pipe. So on page 11.3, we do not have to do anything. We've already opened up the file. We don't have to go through that whole project manager uh, set of hoops that we've been going into. So nothing to do on 11.3. And then at the top of 11.4, nothing to do there. We've already opened up our drainage project, which was SR61. We've set our preferences. The only thing we'll have to do on 11.4 for now, at least the top part of the page, is we're going to do step number eight, and we're going to set SR61-1 as the active network. So I'm going to go here to network from the main menu, pick active network, we only have the one active network, and we'll click OK. Uh, unfortunately, it does not default you know, to that first active network and just set it active. Uh, you have to manually set that active each time. And then you'll see that we're going to add some new structures here. So th they may end up being completely different than these that we're seeing here, this S204 and 206. Uh, we'll see what we end up with here. So toward the middle of 11.4, you're going to go, and we'll go the old way here. We're going to go to Component, Node, and we're going to pick Add. And it should go to the next node that's available for us, which is exactly like the book here. It's going to be S215. And we'll go ahead and click OK in order to get into our node configuration dialog. Now the properties for that node, it's going to be called S215. The node type here is going to be a junction. So there's not going to be any area associated with this. The library item that we're going to pick is manhole type 8. So we're going to pick the pull down here under the library item, and it's going to be manhole type 8. And it's the P bottom 3 cover. J bottoms are listed first, and let's see, it's, it'll be the last one there. Manhole type 8, P bottom 3 cover. And then we're going to have a node bottom that'll be a P bottom 3.5 foot diameter. All right, so um, you're in the drainage project, you're adding a node. Um, the node should, should go up to S-215. Uh, that should be the next available number. Um, I'm at the bottom of page 11.4. It's a junction. And the, for the library item, if you hit the pull down, happens to be the last one in the library items. That's the manhole type 8, P bottom 3 cover. And the node bottom is a P bottom 35 or 3.5 foot diameter. So we'll let everyone get caught up there on 11.4. And then we'll store the rest of the, the node that we're going to have here. So we're going to add that node. We're really just adding a node and a couple of pipes, it looks like. So we'll see where this ends up. All right, so that's got the property set here at the bottom of 11.4. For our location, that's at the top of 11.5. This is going to still use the reference chain of SR61. It's using that same profile, the SR61 underscore PR. The alignment is going to be tangent to element. Actually, excuse me, tangent to chain. And it's going to be at station 707 plus 20 at a 39 foot offset. 70720. You don't have to type the plus mark. As soon as you hit the tab, it'll add the plus mark. And then our offset's going to be minus 39. It's going to be on the left-hand side of that alignment. So minus 39, hit tab. And I'm going to go ahead and hit apply at this point. So I can window center and highlight. I'm going to go back to 214. 
and then up to 215 and that's going to show us where this junction box is. So I, I misspoke. We're not doing anything here with the 204 and the 206. What we are doing is we're inserting a junction box in between 214 and 215. So right now there's one link that goes in between these two. So if I look at my, my links here and I click ID link, right now there's one link pipe 214 that goes from 214 to 215. So we're going to break that pipe in, in half. We're going to have a pipe 214 and then we're going to modify that and we'll have a new pipe 215 I believe. So if you window center that and highlight, it's going to be up here about pretty much toward the beginning of the curve. So if you find the PC, that's station 705 plus 70. And then our new inlet is up here at 707 plus 20, 39 feet to the left. And then for our elevation options here, so there's no spread criteria. Um, it's not a curb inlet, but we can go here to elevations, and the elevation source on this one, we're actually given a, an elevation that we're going to use. If you look at the previous elevation sources, on the reference 10 here, this would be set, it would actually pull an elevation of 32.5, and that's pulling it from our proposed 10 file they end up setting the top of the manhole here to 32.5. So we, we probably could just leave it where it is. You know, as we're placing this um, and hitting apply, it's reading the elevation. So we could just leave it there probably, uh, but we'll go ahead and, and round it off to 32 and a half. So I'll put this back at 70720. Go to elevations, reference surface is not the 10 file but it's still going to force that to be filled out. What we can change here is the elevation source. You're going to change that from reference 10 to user supplied, and we're going to knock down that elevation by about five hundredths of a foot. The node elevation option is same as source, so those two numbers will be the same. And then as far as our vertical alignment, and that the vertical alignment is referring to the pipes that are coming into this junction. Um, we're not matching the soffit. We're not matching the invert. We're going to allow for a drop manhole. So we're, we're not forcing these pipes to, to match at the top or the bottom. Um, we may end up having one pipe come in here that's, uh, let's say, three foot below the, the manhole rim, and another one may be eight foot below the manhole rim. So we're allowing for a a drop manhole here and then we're still retaining our three foot minimum depth but we're changing here in step number six our maximum depth to 10 feet and then we'll go ahead and click apply and that's going to add this s215 to our project now your manhole since we loaded up our project preferences it's going to have a different color than the chapter 11 zip file color so we we had our I had my manhole set up to be orange and then the chapter 11 zip files are the CAD standard colors um, we didn't go through and update the nodes you, you can do that if you'd like to you don't have to but you're probably going to see that yours is different in color, um, and that's fine. So what we need to do now over here on 11.6 is we need to go ahead and edit pipe 214. So we're not going to delete pipe 214, but we're going to make pipe 214 go from S213, which is here. It's going to go from, or excuse me, it's going to go from S215, our new one, to S213. So pipe 214 is now going to go from our new junction over to this curb inlet. 
And then there's going to be a pipe 215 that's going to go from our new junction over to this DVI. So to edit this pipe, we're going to go at the top of page 11.6 and we're going to pick component node, or excuse me, component link edit. And we're going to go right here to pipe 214. You can either hit the pull down and pick pipe 214 or you can click this little tiny icon just to the right of window center and highlight which is ID link and then go click on that pipe and if it's pointing to something else as soon as you click on that 214 pipe it's going to jump right there and pick up that correct pipe for you and what we'll use is we'll use these this little tiny icon just to the right of the from node we're going to make that go ahead and go from 215 over to 213. So I'm clicking the from node, this little tiny icon, and I'm going to go ahead and change that to 215. And remember that these little tiny icons let you connect to those red dots on those structures. So now your pipe 214 is going to look like the screenshot underneath step two on page 11.6. It's going to go from S215 over to S213, and we've got a size of 18 inches on it. And we'll go ahead and click apply to update that link. And then we're going to make a brand new pipe that's going to go from 214 to 215. And we can do that just right from within this dialog. I'm going to click on the second little icon up here. It says add link. It should default to pipe S-2 or excuse me, pipe-215. You're going to click OK there. And we're going to have a from node of S214. And the to node is going to be S215. I'll go ahead and, and redo that so I can have a little bit better connection on these. And that should be the only thing that, or at least uh, that'll be the only thing we'll set up for this pipe. So we'll go ahead and click apply. So what we've done here is we've inserted a junction here in between the previous S214 and 213. And then kind of as a, a side exercise here, at the top of page 11.7, we're going to go ahead and modify our node S200, and we're going to add a J-bottom structure to this. So we're going to go and open up under component node edit. We're going to take a look at S201. And actually, rather than adding a bottom to this, we're changing the bottom type. So um, we had originally in here this P bottom, three and a half foot diameter. And we're going to change that to a J bottom, 35 by 50. So I'm going to just click the pull down here under node bottom and we're going to scroll up and we're going to find a J bottom 35 by 50. And there, there's not, there aren't any good rotation options for these, these J bottoms or the P bottoms. So you have a, a J bottom 35 by 50 and then you have another J bottom 50 by 35. So there, there are rotation options under location for the node itself, the top part of the structure, but there's not rotation options for the node bottom. So you'll, you'll see duplicates of the J and the P bottoms. So 50 by 35 goes left and right more, and then the one that we're picking, the 35 by 50, it's longer up and down. And then there's a whole giant uh, note here in the middle of 11.7. And it, what it's telling you is that the criteria files, when drawing cross-sections, 
they're created to default to the standard inlet bottoms when the cross sections print. Um, and those were written to draw J bottom boxes if the pipes connecting to the nodes require that. What it's really telling you here in, in a whole bunch of words is that uh, the best way to have the cross sections appear as close as possible is to use our, our toggle here to put the node bottom in, in this fashion. It's going to make the cross sections look more accurate. Now, sometimes these, these bottoms here, uh, so if, if I window center and highlight on, on 201, a lot of times you'll see the bottoms won't line up real well with the top of the structure. So that's what you're seeing here in step number three. So if you click this align button down in the bottom right hand side, we're going to click the adjust button right underneath the bottom cell. So right underneath the, the bottom cell here, you can click the adjust, you'll see a preview of it, and you'll see all the different positions it'll lock into around that structure. Now this one looks like it turned out perfectly fine. It's aligned pretty well anyway. Um, now it might have been better to pick appearance wise the 50 by 35 um, and we can always switch that. So you can adjust the cell. When you click OK and click apply it'll update those. Uh, and I haven't been able to find any real difference between whether you click adjust for the cell Let's see if that cell actually moves. Cell doesn't move. The bottom is the part that's always moving. So it doesn't seem to matter from what I can tell which button you're clicking there as long as the preview aligns. It doesn't seem to matter. Now the pipes are going to go to the bottom part here. But as far as which adjust button to press, as long as this preview, the aligned cells, looks okay, uh, I don't think it, it matters. Click OK, click Apply, and those should line up just perfectly fine. If we wanted to adjust these pipes coming in a, a little bit better, we could go to our component, Link Edit. I'll go ahead and ID this pipe here. And our two node, I can use this icon and line that pipe up a little better if I wanted to. I can ID this other pipe. And then align the from node a little bit better. Looks a lot better graphically. All right, so if you look over on 11.8 uh, here, since we did add some additional information to the network, we need to rebuild that network. So that, that network right now, it's the same as, it, as when we first went into the file. It doesn't include the modified pipe 214. It doesn't include the modify, or the new pipe 215. And it doesn't include that junction uh, S215 either. So that's why you're seeing here at the top of 11.8, we're going to go ahead and Go to our network edit menu. It's the only network we have, so it's going to be populated up there by default. And under validation, we're going to click build network. And we should get one more of each of these than we had before. So now we have 15 total nodes in the network, and we have 14 total links in the network. So it should build it just fine. And then we're going to move over to the computations section. And we're going to go ahead and click design network. We're going to get a whole bunch of warnings that we're, we're not going to fix. And since it did redesign that network, when it goes in and redesigns the network, it is going to update all of your areas graphically. So they're going to go to whatever color you might have previously set those errors on, the, the areas on, excuse me. It's going to go ahead and update the nodes, and it's going to update the pipes with whatever colors you had 
uh, in the preferences. Now this file, let's see, yeah, somewhere in this file, and it's going to be down toward the bottom left-hand side, they do have a profile plotted. Let's see what they have on that profile. You will need to unrotate your drawing. And it looks like they have the existing ground here. And I'm not exactly I think this is probably their hydraulic grade line, this purple line. So that's the, that's the preferences that they chose for this profile. And what is indicated here, or will be indicated in a minute, is we're going to reanalyze this system, except instead of using the three-year storm, which I think was the original uh, storm that we had, we're going to use a 25-year storm frequency. So that should change this profile view. So I'm going to go over here to my project preferences. And we're going to look underneath the frequency options on the left-hand side. And originally, we had that designed for a three-year storm frequency. We're going to change that to 25-year, just like you see here on 11.9 and step number two. We'll click OK to save those changes. You might get a couple of shapefile messages, and eventually it's going to tell you drainage preferences have changed. Do you wish to store them? Yep, we'll go ahead and say yes. And then we're going to go and reanalyze this SR61-1 network. So what it tells you here in the note, uh, and also step five, that updated the hydraulic grade line, which is this purple line here, that should update once we reanalyze the network. And keep in mind that analyze the network isn't touching and isn't changing any of these pipe sizes. So what we're checking for here is this network as is, does it work for the 25-year storm frequency? So if we go here to network, and I'll just go ahead and pick edit, and you want to click the button on the right under computations. So we're keeping and maintaining all the pipe sizes, and we want to see if that causes us any, any problems and any issues here. And you can already see there's a little bit of a problem right here between 202 and 207. The hydraulic grade line's coming up out of the top of the pipe. So I'm going to click Analyze, and you'll see that profile grade line go up even a little bit higher. And it should, because we're, you know, we're using a more drastic uh, storm frequency. The nice part is we can always go back to project preferences. I can pick a different frequency. Maybe I pick the 50 year. And I hit the analyze button again. And that profile grade line is going to get a little bit worse there. So you don't have to rebuild the whole system uh, to analyze different storm frequencies. So really looking at this, this pipe here should change. And probably this end pipe as well. Probably both those should change. Now if you want to have our previous uh, plot parameters on this, you can go up to your component profile edit or edit list. You can reopen that Pro 200, and you could open up your profile settings, which I, th I think we saved in the drainage folder, so you know, those are all gone now. Uh, that's why you'd want to save them on a separate folder. But you should see that purple line go ahead and, and get a little bit higher and start coming out of definitely the top of this one pipe, and looks like toward the end as well. Now we have one more change to do here. 
and you're going to see that on page 1110 and that's going to go ahead and update the tailwater condition there at the outlet so you can leave your network configuration open and I'm just going to go here to component node edit and we're going to switch over to S211 out and we're going to go ahead and set the tailwater elevation at 25.7 so this is this is going out into an existing pond or some pond that has an existing water elevation of 25.7 that'll be the only change you make on this S211 out you'll click apply and then this time back on our network configuration I would actually do both icons I would click analyze and you're gonna see at this this end pipe here that hydro grade line jumps way out of the pipe and then now we can click design network really doesn't end up with any changes so really there's two pipes here that that should be fixed there's this one here and then there's the very last one so I'm gonna go back to over here on page 1111 I'm gonna go back to component profile edit list and I'm gonna go ahead and change the drainage information a little bit um, so let's see here under display It'll take me a minute to remember what, yeah, the hydraulic grade line is purple. And somewhere on here, we had, uh, the, it was the link labels. So um, it looks like they have their link label active. It's on text miscellaneous. Let's see if that level is on or off. Let's say all on. And maybe I'm just missing. I want to see, I want to see the pipe labels. Oh, it's uh, actually nothing's checked here, though. So there we go. Link name. And let's hit apply. There we go. So the pipes that need to be changed are pipe 202. And then the pipe 211, the last pipe in the system. So what you'll see here on page 1111 is we're going to go ahead and look at the link profile section and I'll go ahead and find pipe 211 and let's see what they adjust on that so uh, we've got the link profile we don't have to ID it we, we already know where it is we know it's pipe 211 and they end up changing just the pipe size so let's see if that'll work so we're going to change our pipe 211 and this is probably where I was remembering and locking in uh, that 30 uh, inch pipe there. We're just changing the pipe size. We're going to click apply. That network's going to be recomputed. And now that hydraulic grade line is fitting within the pipe and it's good to go. That is not going to fix pipe 202. So for pipe 202, I'll click ID. And. We'll change that pipe size to 24 inch and see if that works. Hit apply. It's going to recompute that network. And that should work. So hydraulic grade line stays within all the pipes. It did not mess up anything down toward the end here. Now, to be more efficient as far as the, the cost of the items, these pipes are they're not they're not all running full so we could we could go and we could tweak some of these pipe sizes and you might have to go back and forth a little bit with them uh, but we could make it a, a little more efficient as far as you know pipe sizing and what the overall cost is going to be but as far as functioning drainage wise this should work so this would this would be the end of the design process and that would kick off into the plan preparation process that we taught last time and that is also in this same manual 
uh, that you have. 